MCS tournament, $250,000 on the line. We got some plays to make, boys. All right, boys, this is the MCS Ultimate Thanksgiving MCS Tournament. I don't know the exact title. I'm not big on titles. I'm big on making plays, getting dubs. That's what it's about, man. This is a huge tournament that we played uh, a couple weekends in a row to qualify to get in the ladders. You had to place in the top 232, something like that, to be able to play, to be able to qualify, and then you get put in a single elimination bracket. But this tournament is not single elimination. It's double elimination. So... All of these 232 people, or 228, I think it is. It's 132 plus 132 is one. I don't know. 200 plus people get put in this bracket, right? And then you play. And you play if you win six games in the winner's bracket, the upper bracket. Then you eventually make the live. And if you lose, you get knocked down into what is called the loser's bracket. Your second chance is double elimination. You have to be eliminated twice. So you have to lose two times in order to get to in order to be out of the tournament and done. That's pretty so you got you got a, a lot of opportunities, a lot of games to be played, a lot of if you want to make a run, you want to play a lot of games. And let's be honest, boys, we played a lot of games, and that's a good thing. That means we made a run. All these games will be live on YouTube. I'll post the next one. When this one gets 400 likes, I will post the next one, man. That's the way I'm going to do it. I'm probably going to voice these over twice. Let me know what's the best way to do them. I have a lot to show, and I'm going to keep experimenting with these tournament games. I don't really have that. I don't communicate. I don't interact that much when I'm locked in, and I'd love to give you guys a little bit of insight what I'm thinking during the plays and during the game as well on top of just the raw gameplay. You know, So that's the way I'm going to go about this first one. Like I said, get it to 400 likes. Um, and I will post the second round or the loser's bracket, wherever it may be. Whatever the next game on our journey is, I will post when this one gets to 400 likes. But this was the first round. I was seated. I was actually, I only played one weekend to qualify. Now, to qualify, you had to play the ladders, right? And then the top eight got a, a two-round buy. You skipped two rounds, which was cool. Uh, but I was away for one of the weekends, so I wasn't able to play in all of them. I only played one day. I went 10-1, and one, uh, and I was, I was top 30. Right. But uh, I had to I would have wound up playing Skimbo had I stayed at the seat I was. So I went on and I threw one game just to move my seating back just to make sure I didn't play my friend in the third round or something like that. Uh, always able to jug jiggle around your seating if you want to. And that's some of that's I've always thought, like, if I was able to get that high in seating, I should be able to go lose a game on purpose to back up in the seating if I want to. I have that right because I earned it by getting that high, honestly. So that's why I did. So I wound up being seated 48, which is good. The first couple games were at home. The first couple games was feeling good, feeling great. But this was game one. Like I said, hit the like button. We get this to 400. I'll drop the next one. If you like these games, if you like the way we're doing them, please subscribe. We're closing in at 30K subscribers. And should I voice these over? Is it too much? Just let them flow naturally. I like common some things that maybe you guys don't pick up on at home and really talk talking to you guys about what's going through my head in these big games. Try to play my best. I did have a 101 fever, and I was definitely sick this weekend. If you guys remember from my last video, I was sick as a dog this weekend. But... The good thing is I'm not physically playing football. I'm actually just playing a video game. So I should be able to overcome, fight through, and play the video game. So this was game one. Like I said, like, subscribe, comment below, boys. Put them notifications on. Let me know you're part of the notification game. $250,000 tournament game one. All right, let me show you the team I went in. Before we get into all this, I know you guys will ask and then figure out uh, what my team was like. I know that's going to be a big question. So I figured let me go ahead and show you this team real quick before we get into all these games. This is the team I decided to roll with. I am in the Seattle playbook on offense, and I'm in the Tampa Bay de defense. Uh, both of those books are on MaddenTurf.com. If you guys want the eBooks, premium membership would be top tier. You get everything I put out: Clef, uh, Skimbo, CC. All these guys are putting out tons of eBooks, and you get all of them with a premium membership. That link is below. But let me show you the team I went with. This is the squad. This is what we went to war with. We used Josh Allen. That gunslinger and his mobility just really throws the ball so much further than Marino. I was really on the fence, uh, but I went with Josh Allen. Just that mobility and that gunslinger just really get the ball out faster, especially on the deep passes. You see we got Cordero Patterson. We put backfield master on him. That's going to allow him to get the extra routes for the running back and be able to catch the ball in traffic and beat his man-in-man -man coverage all the time. We went with TJ Hushmanzada in the slot. 
Uh, he's not one of the top three wide receivers in the game, but he's the best slot. Why? Because he has that slot archetype that allows him to get slot omatic for two AP and slot apprentice for one AP. So that's a that's so why it's still worth having him. He's still been really well for him. He's still 94 speed. That slot omatic ability, you guys know I use it on Kirk. So he's definitely still gonna just really do well with that with that ability. Then our outside receivers, Randy Moss, the new Randy Moss, and Jerry Rice. You guys know we're 50-50 theme team. And the abilities we have on almost every receiver is this deep out elite. It's super glitchy, I'll be honest, man. Any deep pass, it's not even out anymore. Even deep posts, deep seams, anything this ability lights up on. Improved catching. It shouldn't be improved catching. It's pretty much automatic catching. If you're on a possession catch or a rack catch and you get your hands on the ball, uh, and you'll, he'll also help you moss if you're one on one and you hold Y. I mean that deep out elite will light up and you will moss people for sometimes. But you see this Randy Moss 97 speed. He's a deep threat that, like he was in real life. Absolutely just a stud, must have player. If you especially if you're Raiders team team. Now I'll be honest, if you're not Raiders or Titans or whatever team Randy Moss is on, he's not super OP. He's not. He's really. I think they nerfed him just because of the Raiders theme team, but. At the same time, I feel like that made him worse for every non-Raiders team. Made him almost a, a theme team. You need a theme team with him to make him that 97 speed. Otherwise, that Brandon Marshall and other cards are just as good. And the same thing with Jerry Rice. He's going to be outside receiver. We're actually going to slap route tech on him to see if any of these guys want to run man coverage. Jerry Rice will fry. And he also has that deep out elite on him. So he will definitely get some things done as well. Um, but Jerry Rice, 96 speed. He's definitely a stud. And we're going to go with Jared Cook. At tight end, he also has deep out elite. I run a play called clear out where he's on a deep post and he catches it and he, that'll always light up. Make sure he always catches that pass. So you see Jared Cook at 95, 92 speed, 6'5". The O-line, we went with no abilities on the O-line. I was nervous about this. Um, I just feel like if you don't have two abilities, it's kind of rough to just have one. I feel like you need two post-ups or two secure protectors. Having one is like, I don't know, it's like having a shiny hubcap on a Pinto. You know, it's just... Uh, so I, I feel like those deep out abilities, route tech, and things like that will help my offense more. It is a pain, especially on all man. You're going to get shedded to death. Defense, uh, what we went with was Ed Reed and Ronnie Lott up top. Ed Reed is the best safety in the game. You guys, he's a must-have card. Uh, then we went with Woodson and Haynes on the outside. Then we went with Buchanan in the slot. My slot, I, I blitz him so much. It really doesn't matter. I haven't really cared to who's in the slot. Then we're going to use Cam Chancellor and Sean Taylor at linebacker. And then we're going to go with our D-line of, who do we got our D-line right here? You see it. Ted Hendricks, Miles Garrett, Lawrence Taylor. I have six acrobats and two unpredictables in Miles Garrett at D-tackle and Lawrence Taylor at end. So that's the team I'm using, man. Like I said, Seattle offense, Tampa Bay defense. So this was game one. Like I said, 400 likes. We're on a post game two. So make sure you guys enjoy this one. All right, boys, so I was kind of sick as a dog playing these games, so my comms were definitely low, you see. I didn't even have the lights on or anything like Everybody's that. Everybody's where they're supposed to be, boys. Everybody's locked there, you see. We got the camo jerseys on, the big hunter jerseys. I, I, I'll be honest, I'm undefeated in these jerseys. Undefeated so far, so I'm feeling good. First play, we're going up top, and Josh Allen, you know. I, I took Josh Allen over Marino, and right there, I don't know if Marino makes that play, but... That's the halfback master making that catch right there. A little bit in traffic there. We're going for it again, but he covers it, so we dump the ball off here to Patterson. Pick up a couple yards. I can't lie, boys. These jerseys are actually the best in the game. You definitely should have them. Here we're going for the post route. Just come in. A little bit too close to the end zone. Don't get the good angle, and we start the game with a pick. We we got an overthrow touchdown the first play. Then we then we get some decent plays, but then we do a pick. Uh, that's tough, especially in this game where offenses, uh, offenses should be easy. Now, I'll be honest. I, this guy, uh, one of my buddies threw in a little go, game film. Go, a little bit of game film on him, and I was able to watch him play. And I saw him do. I saw him have a lot of struggles against 3-3-5 wide. So, I don't really run 3-3-5 wide too often anymore, but I saw this guy struggle against this. So, I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and add this to my arsenal. As you see us hit TJ Hushmanzada over there on the sideline. Pick up some good plays. So I, I definitely ran a lot of 3 3 5 wide. I was able to give him a little bit of trouble. Oh, should probably be in straight goal line right here, 30 inches. Running the ball in the end zone here. Patterson cut up. Nice. Let's go. Let's go. Let's Touchdown, Cordero. Now, I'll be honest. Cordero Patterson is probably 
one of the best running backs in the history of Madden. Oh, man. I don't know. I mean, we're talking about Dre Archer, Bo Jackson, uh, who else? Eric Dude, Dickerson. Man, Cordero Patterson is right up there with that list as we get this guy to see what I mean. I, there's a little cover for Give them all day, but we're only really rushing two people. Pick. Let's go. Buchanan. And we get a huge pick by Buchanan. What I mean by my slot. Big play by him getting a pick. We're up seven. We just got to go ahead and take our time here. No turnovers. We're looking for this post again. Jerry Rice, toe tap. It's just rough, rough. We don't get that toe tap right there. Here we're looking for the out route. He only rushes two. I have all day with Josh Allen. Got to make a play here. Get another block. We're going to roll out. Just nobody. Nothing doing. We'll get rid of the ball here. Third down. Got to get off the field here. We're going to hit Jared Cook on that post route. Boom. Touchdown. Go. Nice play, baby. Now we're up 14. We just got to stop the run. I saw this guy. I ran on, dude. I don't give a hell what else he does. Yeah, that's why I ran a lot of 335 wide. I didn't want to get ran on. Oh, my God. Come so that's why I just wanted to keep everything in front of me and just. Yep. I just don't want to get ran nope. on, boys. We just want to stop the run. When you play people, that if you let people run on you, you're not going to have any fun. You're not going to have any success. So just wanted to stop the run in this game, and we give up this bomb. God damn it. Oh, Ed Reed. Oh. Oh, my. Just flipping that. Stick. Yeah, if I have my deep safety on the other side instead of the left side, opposite side, that would that be a harder pass for sure. You know, and then we get a desync. In my we desync the first man, game. Game, man. First game desyncs. We had to restart. Shout out the EA, but we're able to get it to the right part right here. And and it's a rough thing about the game. Desyncs, game crashes, all those things is definitely tough. And then we throw. Up. Man, I thought I had that God, wheel route. Maybe if I put some air underneath it, maybe just. Being a little bit too hey, reckless man. with the ball, honestly. This was the first game of the day. I, I want to tell you I didn't have any warm-up games. I don't know. Sometimes it's better to warm up a lot or warm up a little or th stress about it too much, stress about it too little. I don't know. But first game of the day, we already have two turnovers, man. It's just you cannot turn the ball over in a game like this. And we get a sack. We get him to fourth down here. He's going to go for a fourth and two, and we scream. Let's go, man. Get off the field there. All right, so as as much as we turn the ball over, we have opportunities as we hit Jared Cook on that post route again. As you see that light up. Somebody watch, kid. Let's you see that deep out elite light up on that post. He's never going to drop that. Never going to run the ball. Take some time off the clock, man. I'm cool taking my field goal here. Uh, I mean, dude, TJ. Shoot, the stork tried to. Right, here we go. Bumped any more than Eight that. seconds. Holy I'm cool taking my field goal here. I am. But, you know, we'll, if he gives me something, I'll take it. But. And what does he give me? TJ free. So we're up two scores, second half. Ain't no way we just got left like that, dude. Nah, my cover three just got left. But what are you going to do, boys? And right here, we're just getting pressure. We're just keeping contains. He uses Michael Vick. Get those unpredictables going. Oh, man. Ted Hendricks. Store. Ted Hendricks runs around the edge. Gets it done for me there. Let's get everybody deep. Nothing doing Get over the middle, somebody? man. There ain't no way he caught that, is it? Fourth and 25 for this guy. We're just going to cover the crosser. Let's go, Miles Garrett. Big play over the top. Just like that. And then now we're just milking the clock. Now we're just. Right, for route tech on Jerry right we're trying to get out of here with a dub. Jerry we're not worried about anything else. All we need to do is just not turn the ball over, take some time off the clock. And we're going to go up top. We're, we switched Jerry Rice right here to get that route tech in the slot. We lobbed the ball up 28 to call, 7. Man. Huge play, Jerry Rice. Now we're up 21 points. Just, I, th I think at this point we might be on 30-yard cloud flats. We're just keeping everything in front of us. A little bit of screen pressure. Third and eight. Again, five-man rush. He's going to scramble up. Get sacked. Get to a fourth and nine for his tournament life. We send five. Keep everybody in the pocket. He throws it up. Oh, he actually stays alive with that deep corner route over top of Buchanan. So let's change our zone drops just a little bit the next play. We're not going to give that up again. Post route over the middle. He stayed alive. He's fighting. Getting it done. But right there, Ed Reed, best in the game, steps on his back foot and just attacks the football like no other safety in the game. Ed Reed sealing the game. That guy is going to tap. GG's.